Hey everybody, I'm Idiot Vig and this is Backgammon Made Complicated. So you're ready to start playing matches. Fantastic! I'm here to tell you, not so fast. There's a better way that you can improve your play without diving head first into the excitement of tournament backgammon. It may seem strange, but when you're first starting out and maybe you hop on to some online site or you play at your club and, and you say, okay, well, there's plenty of matches or, 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 or side action going around that are one point matches or three point matches or five point matches. And those are short. Those are small. Those are quick. I can learn from them pretty fast. And that sentiment feels true, but the actuality is short matches are very, very, very weird because there's a couple of different factors that we're going to get into. Our assumptions for today, we're going to show you some data that, that looks at different match scores. And these scores are all reported in terms of the number of points you or your opponent is away from winning. So if we have an example like five away, three away, that could be a score of zero to two in a five point match, or it could be a score of six to eight in an 11 point match, or it could be 20 to 22 in a 25 point match. Everything that happened before the score you're at now doesn't matter. What will matter, and we'll go into this in much more detail when we start looking at tournament play in future videos, the important thing is how many points are you away from winning and how many points is your opponent away from winning? Well, that seems strange, idiot, you say. Again, we're, we're pals, we're, we're friends, we're familiar. You can call me idiot, you can call me Vig. I, I answer to lots and lots of names and or pejoratives. But you say, wait a minute, this just feels like inverting the score. Why on earth would we do that? And there's a very important reason We'll talk about the specifics more in future videos, but gammons or cubes or gammoned cubes, uh, and throughout this video, every time I say gammons, this always applies to backgammons as well. Um, it's just that backgammons come up a very small percentage of the time compared to gammons. Uh, so any, any kind of gammon or cubed gammon that gets us exactly to that zero away winning score is way more valuable than any kind of gammons or cubes that don't. So if we're four points away from winning and we win a gammon on a two cube, that takes us from four away to zero away, and it does so efficiently. If you're three away and your opponent is four away and you win that same doubled gammon, you still win the match. The outcome is exactly the same. But what's different is that those four points you didn't get full value from. Because it doesn't matter if you win by one point or if you go over by eight points, it doesn't matter. It's just the first person to reach that winning score wins the match. So actions where we get more efficient gammons or more efficient cubes or more efficient recubes end up increasing in value. And those kinds of gammons or cubes that allow us to win, but we didn't get the full value. It's not that they're bad. It means that they're less efficient though. And when they're less efficient, it means that, you know, that double or that gammon isn't as potent as it normally is. So it's tricky. It's less valuable than it normally is. And those kinds of transitions, those kinds of adjustments are the things you're thinking about in matches all the time. Um, as a baseline, we're going to talk about money play coming up in the next video and, and what that means. But there's a, there's a couple of assumptions if, if you're new and you've never played the computer before and you're not certain what some of these settings are. Uh, money play does use the Jacobi rule, which says you cannot get a gammon unless the cube has been turned. Uh, it also assumes beavers. Again, we'll talk more about that when it comes to money play, but the taker can automatically increase the cube another level. So if you double somebody to two, someone can beaver and say the cube's at four now. And then the original doubler would have the option to take that beaver and play for four or pass and pay out the two points that they just offered again. Uh, we don't have to worry about this now. Just know that beavers are a thing that you do if somebody offers you the cube and you are a favorite. 
Okay, so there's a couple of assumptions about money play, but that's just one standard. Gammons don't change value. It doesn't matter if the, the, the cube's on 2 or 4 or 32 or 128. Uh, the, the value of that gammon doesn't change because you're just playing an unlimited stake. You're just, you're just counting up points over time. There's no, I need to get to this many points in order to win. You're just playing. So that gammon value is fixed. That cube value and that recube value is fixed. Here, we're going to take a look at all of the states from a five point match and show you just how different it is to money play. There's two important considerations that we're gonna look at in these scores. The first one is the gammon impact. And in this table I'm about to show you, cells that get highlighted in light green, the gammon value plays just like money. So, I mean, it's, it's not quite fixed the same way that money is. Those things can change. We'll talk about that more later. But just know that the, the gammon value is pretty close to what you'd expect to playing like money. Then there's this brand new idea of gammon go, which is just a fancy way of saying gammons are more valuable to you at this particular score. This usually happens when you're an even numbered away from winning. Because when you're even numbered away from winning and you gammon, those two points are still going to keep your score even. They might get you to zero. Uh, that's something which is inherently more valuable. Cells in red will be marked gammon save. And that's something where we want to try to avoid getting gammoned. Because the value of a gammon or a cubed gammon to the opponent could be a lot bigger than it normally is. And then there are also some cases where the gammons just don't matter in match play, and we'll talk about those too. In addition to the gammon impact, there's the recube impact too. Again, in money, the, the, the window for you to redouble is fixed. It's, it's known. It's not going to change. Uh, it's not going to, to matter what the level of the cube is at. You know, you're simply going to throw it if you are in the cubing window. In match play, though, just like the value of gammons can change, the value of cubes and recubes, and when I say recube, I mean recubing from two to four, those values can change too. So the text is gonna be highlighting green if it's something where we can recube a lot easier than we would for money. And the dark red text says we can't recube as easily as we can for money. Those in blue, the recube just doesn't matter. And then lastly, are there cases where the recube is a lot like money? And you're thinking to yourself, okay, all right, that's, that's, that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna look out for certain kinds of scores. It can't be that different. Oh, but it is. If we look at all of the scores from five away, five away, the table's gonna look something like this. These X's that I put in each cell indicate the relative complexity uh, of how difficult it is to play that score, how non-intuitive it is, uh, like money, er, compared to money, rather. So if we take a look at this, you know, the one away scores are fairly straightforward. When it's one away, one away, that's a situation known as double match point. So it doesn't matter if I get a gammon win or a backgammon win or my opponent gets a gammon win or a backgammon win. We only need one point to win the match. Extra points on top, just don't matter. So gammons don't matter here, recubes don't matter here, and you're just simply making every single play to maximize the most single wins. If it gets or gives up extra gammons or back gammons, we don't care. We just wanna be able to maximize our wins. Uh, two away, two away is a special score that acts pretty much like that, but you'll see I've got this asterisk here. That's because We'll talk about why it's always correct to double at your very first turn at two away, two away in another future video. So really, one away, one away, and two away, two away should play exactly the same. There are some special cases where it might not. So it's not exactly yellow. I've added a little bit of green here because if you get into a situation after the first roll where you know, you've started with your best possible sequence and your opponent has their worst possible sequence, maybe you might want to try to play for a gammon instead of doubling immediately. Uh, you know, it's, 
this is that's a very remote circumstance, but it can happen. Just know that once you're up to speed, one away, one away, and two away, two away are exactly the same. All of the other one away scores, no matter what side of the table we're looking at, behave pretty much like you'd expect. Gammons are useful to us at two away. Um, if we don't cube. If we cube automatically, then the gammons are actually immaterial and one away, one away plays just like two away, one away after you turn the cube. Once you're at four away and five away, you're going to double at your first opportunity. These gammons increase in value because if you're four away, one away, you automatically turn the cube to two, you win a gammon. Those four points from your four way makes you a winner and the gammon value here is just absolutely huge. Uh, same with five away, it's not as nice as four away, you know, but you will get all the way from being five points away from winning to DMP in just one game if you can pull off gammon. So these are all kind of gammon go scores. The difference is when you're three away. Now, if we get a doubled gammon, that's four points. That's great for us because we would win the match if we get a doubled gammon. But the value of that gammon isn't as big as it is when you're four away or you're five away. So believe it or not, in terms of how aggressively you should play for gammons, if the cube is on two, you're three away and your opponent is one away, you wanna be about as aggressive as you would for money. And that seems weird but it's one of the many adjustments that you'll need to make for tournament play. Uh, same sort of thing here when your opponent's two away and we are one away. You know, again, this is something where really all four of these should just be double match point um, because almost all the time your opponent is going to throw the cube. You're going to throw the cube at your first possible opportunity or it's one away, one away, and the cube doesn't come into play. So really these top four are all, all yellow where gammons just don't matter. Once we get beyond the one-away scores, that's where things start getting a little bit more weird. And you also see that's a little bit more complex too. Um, I'm not gonna dig too far into this, but just know that you know we can see here when we are two away, gammons are very good for us, although they're immaterial if the cube is turned. At four away, gammons are also very good for us. And that should make sense because a doubled gammon's worth four points. We're four away, that gets us to zero. That's an efficient double gammon. We like that. Similarly, when our opponent is four away, we can see that gammons are both valuable to us at some scores, but always valuable to the opponent. And sorry, I, I should have made this, this two-way, four-way shaded like, uh, like these are here. Um, some of these scores can be very, very tricky, especially four-way, four-way, because you're going for a gamut at the same time you're trying to save a gamut. Those four points that could get you to zero are the same four points that get your opponent to zero as well. And as a result, even though you know, you're going to be aggressive, you need to be able to shift gears very quickly. And that's sort of a weird thing. If you're just playing money back gammon, you know, you, the values of gammons aren't changing. And here, here we have a specific score. Gammons are both very valuable to you and very costly if you lose them all at the same time. So it's sort of a strange spot. The same is true of five away, four away as well. The difference is that those four points now only get you to one away. So I've gone with a little lighter green here and it's shaded into red because you still need to, to be mindful of gammons when your opponent is four away. These are all tricky scores to learn. The three away scores are also tricky scores to learn because those, you know, though, when we are three points away from winning, those doubled gammons aren't terribly efficient for us. And similarly, cubing, recubing from two to four isn't terribly efficient for us either. Um, except for three away, where it's exactly like money, all, everything in the three away, three away and further, there's going to be some kind of adjustment you're gonna to need to make if you ever have to ship a four cube. Four away, three away, I'm not going to get into right now, but just know that Everybody, and I mean absolutely everybody, has a leak at four-away, three-away. 
the trailer should be extremely aggressive, as always, because those four points away from winning can be achieved with a single doubled gammon. But when you are three points away from winning, the doubled gammon is no good for you. And the recube is no good for you because you don't get full value from either. So you need to be extremely cautious in the way you play when you are leading three away and the opponent is four away. Similarly, if you are four away and the opponent is three away, the green light is on for you. You can go nuts with plays. And it's correct to do so a lot of the time. We dig in a little bit further and we get to the five away scores. And now these also tend to be a little bit weird. And, and Michi, rightly, calls this a stupid score. Because the four points we get from a doubled gammon only gets us to one away. And that's nice. But five away is awkward. If we win two points, that gets us to three away, which we just saw doesn't have great gammon value, doesn't have great recube, recube value. So there's not a ton of incentive to go out and win a gammon when you're five away. And there's not a ton of incentive usually to recube when you're five away. Um, but, you know, again, th those situations can happen. The point of all of this was to show you that there are tons and tons and tons of adjustments that you need to make when the score gets close to zero away for both players. In long matches, if you're you know, playing some of the online tournaments that are 11 or 13 points, it's going to play very much like money uh, for the first, you know, for, for a whole bunch of games uh, until either the score gets, gets widely different um, or uh, you know, both players eventually reach a five away, five away state. And then things start to change drastically. If you've never played money backgammon before and you want to start playing tournaments, are you going to spend all your time learning all of these different nuances and then trying to apply them? Or would you rather just learn, well, what would I do for money? And then I can make an adjustment based on what I know about the score. The latter is much, much, much easier. If you're going to be playing tournament backgammon seriously, you need to start by playing tons and tons of money sessions because you're going to find plenty of times in matches where you get to a point you have no idea what you're looking at on the board. Do you know what centers you? Asking yourself, what would I do for money? Because if you know that, and you've seen enough of those positions, and you can feel good about, okay, this is what would happen at money play. What's left is saying, how does this score differ from money? And is that something that would impact my decision? When you learn the one money standard and make adjustments, it's tons, tons easier. I'm not saying you can't dive into matches without playing money. I'm saying you're going to have an awful time learning all these different match states and, you know, extrapolating this to, to longer scores. And, you know, some of these kinds of things that we see here can also sort of exist when the scores are wildly different. But there's a lot of adjustments. There's a lot of nuance. And if you haven't grounded yourself with money play, you're just making more work for you to start. Instead, if you boot up that bot, if you boot up Extreme Gammon or BG Blitz or GNU, and you work at it, and you just play money games again and again and again and again, when you get to those weird spots in matches, you can feel confident knowing, okay, I know how I would play, quote unquote, normally. I just don't know how to make the adjustment for this particular score. And that's a lot easier to learn after the fact. If instead you have a particular position where, you know, it looks like an error at one score and isn't at another score, you're not going to have as much of a frame of reference for that. Anyways, that's a lot of complicated stuff. Don't worry, we're going to uncomplicate and probably recomplicate it later. Just know that when it comes to, to, to starting out, if you can't say what you would do for money, you're probably not going to get it right in context of the score that you're at. 
So get cracking. Start playing a whole bunch of money games against the bot. Get better with that. Feel more confident. And when it comes time to answer things for the tournament, you're going to be in a much, much better place than if you hadn't started out that way. All right. Get grinding, everybody. We'll be back with a new video soon. Take it easy. We'll see you next time.